begin with the first presentation entitled Acceptability of and Hesitancy Towards a Hypothetical Gonococcal Vaccine, presented by Mr. Nachanon Pongsata. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nachan Pongsata. Today, I will be talking about my project, which is a, an extended literature review on the acceptability of and hesitancy towards a hypothetical gonococcal vaccine. Um, so first, let's begin from gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is the second most common sexually transmitted disease worldwide, and there are growing concerns regarding the resistance to the first-line monotherapy um, and this could be a potential threat to the future public health. Therefore, a sustainable solution is needed. But, however, in the past, there were multiple attempts to develop a vaccine against gonorrhea, but all of them have failed. Up until a few years ago, it has been found and it has been reported that um, the protection can be achieved by using the Group B outer membrane vesicle meningococcal vaccine, which is the vaccine that is used against meningitis group B. They can also cr provide cross protection against gonorrhea as well and other bacteria in Nigeria family as well. Um, and however, due to the fact that, um, the due to the nature of the SCD vaccine, it might make people uncomfortable getting it. And also because of the narratives and increasing concerns regarding the COVID-19 vaccine, it can result in higher um, vaccine hesitancy. Um, and next, the vaccine hesitancy is a term, um, by, de by definition, it means a delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccination despite availability of vaccination services. Um, and so in this project, I will review relevant literature in order to compile the information and to predict the factors that will affect the gonococcal vaccine uptake. And the papers that I've used are um, the three C's model and determinant matrix, um, the HPV vaccine, um, men who have sex with men vaccination behavior, vaccine mandate in America, and gonococcal vaccine acceptance, which the first two papers that I will mention are uh, focusing on the incarcerated women first. So among the group of incarcerated women, 79% of them would accept the vaccine because of the perception of the severity of infection and because of the vulnerability to infection. And the reasons of not getting it is because of the fear of, death, um, of vaccination. Next, it will be about the men who have sex with men. So 83.5% of them would accept the vaccine because of their awareness of the disease, because of increased HIV transmission, emerging antimicrobial resistance, and also among the PrEP users who have higher health relief model. And the reasons of not getting it is because they're younger than 25 or older than 40 years of age, or having unpleasant experiences with accessing healthcare in the past. And also, people who haven't, haven't been tested for STD for more than 12 months. Um, so, uh, after I review those relevant literatures, it can be categorized that these factors fall broadly into these three factors, which are, first, the complacency, second, the confidence, and the third is convenience. So I'll go from complacency first. So the complacency means um, and it, in individual risks of disease, individual perceived risk of the disease and or the vaccine. So the solution in this, to, in order to increase the vaccine uptake and decrease the hesitancy would be to fill the information gaps and provide unambiguous messages about gonorrhea, about drug resistance, and also about the vaccine to, tar to the target populations, and also to those that involves in decision-making process, for example, the parents, healthcare workers, religious leaders, and so on. And also to enunciate specifically on the demographics that are less likely to accept the vaccine. And the second factor would be the confidence. And the confidence is on um, the vaccine safety and efficacy, and also on the policy makers and the whole, in, uh, and the whole healthcare institutions. And the solution to increase the confidence would be to prove that the vaccine is safe and effective. And also the policy makers need to create an environment that supports their credibility and also to maintain the public trust. And for the healthcare professional like us, we need to emphasize on the importance of the vaccine in professional manner without showing any discomfort about STD-related matters. And lastly, it's about the convenience. Um, so convenience on, um, in accessing immunization services and vaccine. In order to increase the convenience, for example, we can use this school-based vaccination in pre-sexual adolescents, pre-sexual debut adolescents, or using the prefer, or offer the vaccine on the preferred side of vaccination. For example, MSM would prefer to have their vaccine in primary care clinic. 
and also to narrow the gaps in language literacy among the ethnic minorities, for example, providing the leaflets um, in their languages or having a translator for them. And also, lastly, to provide the vaccine for free by the government funding. So all in all, um, well, because of the development of the gonococcal vaccine is, is possible in the future, and there are multiple researches that are going forward, uh, multiple clinical trials that are going forward. So implement planning in vaccine hesitancy is really important, especially in after those COVID days. Thank you. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask, and I'll try my best to get to you. Um, OK, thank you for your presentation. And I would like to ask about the methodology, because mm -hmm. I, I know that you have a very interesting result. And thank you. could you please uh, give us the brief uh, methodology that you already did? Uh, yes, of course. So basically, my uh, presentation is a an extended literature review. So basically, I reviewed the relevant literatures published on online medical and scientific databases using the keywords such as gonococcal vaccine, vaccine hesitancy, and STI vaccines. Uh, and the process um, was conducted between September 2021 and January 2022. Uh, and the papers I picked um, to be used in this project is a paper that are from peer-reviewed journals. Are there any more questions from our judges in on site? Okay, so uh, are there any questions from our judges in online platform? Yeah, I have uh, one question. Can you explain in detail about the um, methodology that you use um, more in more detail? For example, what is the database? What kind of database that you use? And how, what is the inclusion? exclusion criteria and how many people extract the data? Um, so basically the databases that I use are from, um, mainly is from, from PubMed and also, and also from Scopus as well. But mainly I focus on the PubMed because I want to look at the clinical trials and all about the case reports that has been reported um, regarding the COVID, um, not COVID-19, sorry, and on the gonococcal vaccine. Um, and for inclusion and, and exclusion criteria, there are no, kind of like um, the specific inclusion or exclusion criteria since this is not the systemic review, uh, which is um, the weakness of this paper as well. Um, but my inclusion and exclusion criteria would be that I'll try to focus on the papers that are more, that I await papers that are from peer-reviewed journals apart from the papers that are not from peer-reviewed journals, if it makes any sense. Are there any questions from our judges? Thank you.